In this video, I'm going to show how to take apart the Jura Impressa C5. Um, I've actually already gone ahead and pulled out a couple screws, but I'll show you where they were. So the screws are these uh, these oval-headed screws. You can purchase a key for the oval head screws, which is right here. You can purchase one of those off of Amazon. And those screws were right here. So this screw was right here. You just use this to untwist it. So anyway, remove these four screws from the back. Then when you flip this up, there is one Torx head screw, which looks like this, right here. And there is another one on this side of the machine, right up here. Um, then you'll want to remove the water container. And once you have all that removed, the top of the entire machine will lift right off. So you just grab onto it and lift it up. Alright, so the top of the machine comes off. Set that aside. Then these rubber gaskets here. These sides, um, the, in order for the sides to come out, the top has to come off first. And then on the front here, and I'll show you just so you can see what they look like, uh, there's a little tab right here. So what you have to do to release those is one, you can put a lot of effort and pry to get them, or you could stick a small screwdriver right in line with that and pry in there, but it can scratch the surface so in my, my opinion you're better off just pulling it out but if you take this and pull it outwards first then pull out it comes off a lot easier because it'll release those clips all right so that's set aside then on this side of the machine <clears throat> you can release this side although i will say other than getting to the brew unit there's not a whole lot of purpose in it first i'm going to show you the other side um, the spring clips work all the same way on this side uh, as they did on the other. So you can pull it out and that side removes. So basically the same exact setup. All right. So in this machine, they're having an issue with the machine leaking water into the grounds tray. And the reason for that was actually because there were some um, like French vanilla or hazelnut flavored beans put into the coffee grinder. Don't ever do that. Uh, if you, I don't know if you can catch it in the video, but this has like, it's almost like sap on it. It's super sticky. And um, that's just from the beans that were sitting in here. So you can imagine if this gets that sticky, it gets uh, down inside the grinder, clogs all that up. Then it gets down into the brew unit, clogs all that up. Then in turn what it does is you go to make a cup of coffee, it uh, builds up too much pressure. And these things are, have an overflow valve built into them. There's actually one right here. And what it'll do is if it builds too much pressure, it'll release right out of the tip of this cap. This is the, probably the second most common cause of leaks in this coffee maker. Um, these quite often need to be replaced. So if you see water uh, marks here, white uh, marks on the tip of this, that means it has been leaking. Very simple to fix. You just grab onto these little um, cotter pin type clips and you just grab onto them with a pair of pliers, pull out, and it's plugged, okay, and you can just pull the hose out. As you can see, it has a little bit of water in it, so now it's leaking. I'm going to just go ahead and put that back in. Um, then, simply need to put the clip back on. So if you replace this piece, all you need to do is to pull that clip, that clip, pull the one screw out of it, remove it, put the new one in, put the new clips back on. Quick and easy fix. 
This one right here is the diverter valve, which uh, sends water to either the steam or the coffee. Uh, this machine works is the water comes from the water tank over here and it drains in. Now this right here can clog and get, you can see there's a little bit of coffee grounds and whatnot in there. Those tend to get clogged up, especially if you leave the machine sitting in storage. These machines should never sit. If they sit, they can get ruined. Um, actually, you can see a little evidence of a water leak right there. That's what it looks like. If you ever notice water, it'll just be a white stain. So the water comes through this hose right here, crosses across, comes down into this. This is your flow meter. So this will detect when the pump is moving the water and it'll send a signal to the machine. If this fails, the machine will not allow it to work um, because it'll think there's no flow and it's trying to protect the pump and all the other components involved. So this is a fairly common part that needs to be replaced. Then obviously the pump. Um, if you hear really, really loud noises coming from your pump and you're not getting good flow of water, it is going to be one of two things. It's either going to be this part right here, which is a membrane regulator, or it's going to be the pump leak. The membrane regulator, it uh, actually acts as a filter. So anything that makes it through the little screen over at the water tank will make its way through here. It'll get stopped up into here. If this gets clogged, which can get clogged for a few different reasons, one of which is if you don't take care, eh, don't descale your machine as intended, or if you don't run a filter on the machine and you don't use filtered water, or if you don't use the machine much and it sits in storage, any one of those things can cause this to clog over time. Um, if this clogs, it's a fairly inexpensive part, about $35. It's pretty easy to change. You pull this clip out and this black piece is threaded into the white part of the pump. So you just spin it loose and it unthreads. Usually that requires removing the entire um, pump, which isn't a big deal. It just slides out. Um, and then you unthread that and put a new one on it. 99% of the time, if you're having an issue with water flow, it's going to be this right here. This can also be a source of a leak. So if you're having a leak, the three things to look at are this, this, and this. Um, if you're having an issue with water not flowing, this is generally the part that, well, not flowing, but if the machine thinks it's not flowing, so it's shutting off, it would be this. If it's not flowing at all, it's either clogged or the pump's not working. Um, all these parts are not that difficult to change, but because it's a Jura, the parts are pretty expensive. So basically, just a quick rundown, the water flows through here, it comes through here, hits the filter, goes up, and gets into the boiler back there. There is actually two boilers, one in front of the other. The one in the back boils for the coffee. Um, then it makes its way out of that. Uh, it makes its way out of that into this, which diverts the water either up into, which goes right to the steam valve, comes out the steamer, or the other way goes through this, uh, the blow off valve there runs down and it actually comes over to the brew unit itself. Um, so then it's pretty basic. With the top off, you can actually power it up and you can turn on the, um, the coffee maker itself and see how it operates. I think when troubleshooting quite often, it can be good to see what, what the machine does when it's open. So I'm gonna have to real carefully set the machine or set the water tank into the machine. All right, and make sure it realizes there's water in it. Okay, so now it, it understands there's water in it, so it's on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and brew a cup, and you can see what it looks like. So I'll just use this. Um, here we go. So the coffee just grinds, falls into it. Now, this part of the grinder, you can see it leaves a little residue of coffee. So when it's grinding fresh coffee, 
technically only about 50% of the coffee grounds that go into your cup are actually fresh, believe it or not. Um, that's just the way it operates. So you can see on the inside everything moves and shifts. So this is how the machine operates. Uh, I'm not sure it's giving me some sort of an error. Oh, it's telling me to... Okay. Okay, so that's a quick rundown of this machine. Uh, the brew unit can be removed if you would like to. Uh, it doesn't require a whole lot. There is a few screws that hold it in place. Um, it's located. You can see one right inside there. They're all hex head. There's another hex head there. Uh, you pull those two screws and you can remove this entire unit. Now the grinder, uh, you can you can actually, if your grinding burrs start to wear out, you can adjust these grind settings and get them to go finer than the machine actually allows. If you ever do that, be careful because you can do damage to the machine in the process. I'm going to show you how to access the top of the grinder. Really when you do this, there shouldn't be any beans in the machine. But I'll just make do. Alright, these are going to fall out when I remove this cover, but that's okay. Alright, so there's a couple more. A lot of times beans get stuck in here, I just use a pair of pliers to remove them. Okay, so you've got a screw in each one of these holes here. It's the same hex head that that goes everywhere else on this machine. Okay, once you get those screws out, this entire unit will lift out. Okay, so took a little bit of work. I ended up actually having to use a flathead screwdriver because these screws were so clogged with chunks of coffee beans. But Anyway, get this loose. Be very careful that this goes back in the exact same direction it was or you will be turning your machine too fine or too coarse. Um, actually, I had already removed this, but this piece is underneath. If you look at it, it looks really wet and oily. Uh, that is from the uh, flavored beans that I was telling you about and you can see that layer of oil. It's almost like a, feels like a tree sap. A sap, it's really sticky. Um, you can see right here, I cleaned it off with a paper towel, and that's, that's what it looks like. That's what happens if you use those, uh, flavored beans. Like I mentioned, you shouldn't be using those, but, alright, so now to take apart this grinder. Best thing to do is to take a picture before you get started of the location of everything. There's little blue marks here, and those indicate where everything lines up. If you set it wrong, the Jura grinder will not actually function, so it needs to be put back exactly the way it was. So I snapped the picture. Now you also make sure that this part has the teeth facing exactly the right direction as well. So this part right here, uh, I'll just leave it in place for now. So. You can see that I can turn this. The way that this works is those blue lines are supposed to be lined up when you have it here. But basically, I'm just going to make sure I was in the same position I was in when I took it apart. All right. So now to loosen it up, you have to spin this. And actually, I'll have to spin it beyond where this allows. So I'm going to have to remove this part. <clears throat> Let's see here. Actually, what I can do is just lift it up and spin it beyond. So you have to spin it until these tabs come free on the center part. You can see those tabs are now free. Well, as soon as that happens, this can lift out. Okay, now you can access the inside of the grinder. 
if you use really oily beans, this will have a nasty film on it. Um, this one hasn't used a lot of oily beans, so it's not too bad. So next step, just take your vacuum cleaner, stick it right inside of here, and turn it on. As I said, this one's not too bad, but uh, what I like to do is I like to break off all the stuck on stuff down on that bottom layer. You can see where I'm scratching off a stuck on layer. If you use oily beans, those will be really difficult to move. And what will happen is they'll clog up the grinder and you'll only be getting, you know, a portion of the grounds that you're supposed to be getting at a time, which will result in a weak cup of coffee. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this chute out as well at the same time. And now that I've got it broken loose, I'll vacuum it one more time. Now you don't have to get it 100% perfect, that's good enough as long as there's nothing um, blocking the chute or, you know, no big clumps stuck on any of this stuff. So this looks pretty good now. Um, if you ever need to change your burrs, which you can do, uh, they, these part, uh, this part right here can be removed from here. You just use that same Torx bit that, that goes on every screw on this machine. And remove this but be very careful when you do that because there are three springs and three ball bearings on top of them that are underneath this and so you really don't want to remove it unless necessary um, don't remove it to do a cleaning and if you do remove it pull it off very slowly and make sure all them uh, three ball bearings and the springs are all accounted for set them aside very carefully when you put them back together, you'll have to drop the three springs inside, place the ball bearings right on top of them, and gently slide it down so it lines up to it, and tighten it up. Without those, this grinder will not function properly. So it's an absolute must, and they're kind of difficult to track down replacements if you do lose them. So that said, this is all. This all looks good. It's pretty clean. Nothing really clogged. So I drop this back down inside. We'll line up those two blue marks then I will slide this back around to where it was which was that position right there and I had this let's see I had this and okay so that was the position I was in I'm gonna take a look at my picture just to verify that let's see here okay all right. So here's my picture. So I look at the distance between all these. Oh, I'm one notch off, as you can see from the picture. So I'm going to turn it back the next notch. And I also, anytime I do this, I always max out this one direction or the other, so it's easy to know where it was. Otherwise, it makes it kind of tricky if it's halfway. You can also look at it in the picture. You can see one tooth. Uh, is beyond that and then it's got the tab just like here one tooth and then the tab So then you can see the number one is in line with that tab So you can see everything is all perfectly in line everything is exactly as it was before I took it apart If you should need to change the entire grinder all you need to do is remove these t three screws Okay, so moving forward uh, to change the entire grinder you'd remove three three screws this one screw remove this plastic attachment on the side of the grinder. The entire grinder assembly would slide up. But in doing so, you will need to unplug the motor. Um, just unplug the little prongs on this. And If I haven't mentioned it yet, obviously before you touch anything electrical in this machine, make sure it's not plugged in. Uh, the entire unit would slide out. The motor can be changed individually or the entire grinder can be changed either way. Um, okay, so let's see, moving on to other things. Uh, on the brew unit, there is on occasion an issue with uh, the back side of the brew unit having stuff caked onto it. So as you can see, this one's pretty clean. 
but right down in there a lot of times this will get clogged this flapper is actually what scrapes off the puck once it's complete but if you should need to that's how you access that you can just get in there and clean all that off just wipe it all nice and clean um, I would recommend while you got the machine torn apart clean up all these coffee grounds everything that you see here because obviously um, you can clog things up and might as well clean it while you're at it all right as far as the brew unit I'm not gonna get into all the repairs on the brew unit there's plenty of videos out there and they're all pretty much universal on Ajura the brew units are nearly identical on every single machine so there's not a whole lot to say about that um, I also am not going to get into any of the repairs on the electronic circuit boards. Um, the, some of that stuff can get a little bit trickier. Most of it is so expensive that it's not hardly worth repairing yourself because you can just send this machine in and pay a flat rate fee to have Jura do the repairs. And generally when you start getting into the electronics and controls, they start getting so expensive that it's not worthwhile and you might as well just send it to them and let them fix it for less money. Uh, I guess I've run through all the things that I want to run through on this machine. So if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. You can leave me a comment below and I will do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching my video.